tranny some questions and they'll answer them if you're lucky it will be one of your questions ask tranny yeah hey everybody welcome to the approximate podcast my name's Jamie French, and you're, uh, this is the 10th episode of Ask a Tranny, usually a show that happens on Friday. It's now happening on Saturday because uh, of reasons. So thanks to everybody who's uh, joining us in the room so far. Um, let's just get right down to it. Uh, let's start asking, uh, I'm sorry, let's start answering <laughs> questions that have been uh, sent in to us, to our email. Uh, let me see. I got a few here, and we're going to start with, uh, let's see, uh, Evan. Evan asks, uh, several questions. Uh, let's see. Evan says, uh, hi gang, Evelyn here. Happy belated birthday, Jamie. Thank you very much. Uh, my birthday was July 3rd, so several weeks ago. Uh, I hope you had a fine time and you didn't do anything, uh, stupid. Uh, debatable. Debatable. I always reserve my birthdays for a time of supreme stupidity. (laughs) Uh, usually I drink enough to erase the memory. So, (laughs) uh, I can't answer you one way or the other. It's a blur. It always is. Uh, question one. Official first question. Uh, Evan asks, uh, I have been recovering from a very dangerous chest infection. Sorry about that. Uh, if the meds hadn't worked, you would have been down one fan permanently. Ooh, scary stuff. Sorry to hear that. Uh, they worked. Well, good. Uh, obviously they worked, uh, because these questions keep going. <laughs> and I assume this was not written by a ghost. Uh, but the mixture had some unpleasant side effect at one stage. I was arguing with the furniture. <laughs> I'm better now. Uh, to cut to uh, to cut to the quick of it, uh, have you ever been on prescription meds that had strange side effects? Uh, you know, I've gone through a limited number of um, surgeries in my life where uh, prescription medications would have been administered to me. Um, I've never uh, received any kind of prescription medicines through uh, therapy or anything like that. Uh, so my experience with them is limited to like hydrocodone, uh, maybe a little bit of uh, low-level uh, Valium. Um, and that's really about it. Uh, I remember back when I was 16, um, I was put on uh, Zoloft uh, temporarily. And... Uh, the effects were not good. It didn't work for me. I was misdiagnosed. <laughs> and I, I took like two of the fucking Zoloft and they made me feel incredibly anxious and out of my skin and out of my head and I just stopped taking them. I just threw the bottle away at 16. Uh, the couple of surgeries I went through where I was prescribed painkillers and like low-level Valium, those medications, not only did I take very few of them because I, I got a, a high threshold for pain, so I don't really require, like I don't, I never feel the need to take a bunch of medication. Um, they never really did anything. They may feel a little, maybe a little uh, woozy, a little lightheaded at worst. Uh, but no, I have no real horror stories of prescription medications. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. I'm, I'm just not a pill-taking kind of person, and the few pills that I have taken in my lifetime have not yielded any odd uh, kind of physiological uh, responses. So, uh, no interesting story there. Uh, I hope you're happy. Thanks. <laughs> um, let's move on to question two from uh, Evan. Uh, I'm wondering if it's worth keeping... Uh, okay, so this is a musician's question right away. I can tell it's just from the first few words. Uh, For the musicians in the crowd, um, I'm wondering if it's worth keeping the compressor in my pedal loop. Hold on. Let me me make sure I'm reading this right. I'm wondering if it's worth keeping the compressor in my pedal loop. Would it be better to just rely on the amp's own built-in one? Do you have a view of amp board compressor? Okay. So if 
if I'm understanding this right, uh, this is a musician who is asking me whether or not uh, they should keep a compressor pedal in their like effects chain on the floor, or if they should rely on the built-in compressor that comes with their amplifier. Um, okay, so two schools of thought on that. Uh, the first one is, um, how much, how lazy are you? That's what it comes down to. If you're lazy, just go with the compressor that's built into your amplifier. Uh, usually, if you're you're, a, it's like a live musician versus studio musician kind of question. And I know most people have to be both, or are both, or choose to be both. Uh, but if you don't really care, if you're not really using compression a whole lot, if you're not using compression to shape your signature sound, as it were, or you're not using it for pragmatic reasons in the studio, ah, just stick with the thing that comes with your fucking amp. You know, that kind of becomes your signature sound. Your amp largely becomes a part of your signature sound because it has a built-in compressor. It's another effect that you use that's built into the character of the amp itself. And, uh, and yeah, just stick with that if you're lazy. If you're not, if you really do give a shit about your overall tone and about how you sound uh, in the studio versus how you sound live, um, I would bypass the amp compressor altogether and use a very carefully selected pedal that, uh, that conforms to your taste and become a master at that. Uh, because that's a thing that you can, when you bypass the compressor in your amp, you now have complete co creative control using the compressor you have on the floor. Um, it's easier to use the built-in compressor on your amp, but you get to really, really pick and choose when you use a, 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 a pedal of some sort or, or a, a rack-mounted unit. Something outside of your um, your amp, you know, something that's part of your effects chain. Uh, so, uh, if I had my druthers, yes, I would have a multitude of compressors to choose from that uh, are out that are not built into my amp that I could use for s separate purposes. The kind of compression you want to use doing a live show is going to be a different kind of compression that you want to use in the studio. And you want to, you want to have full reign over your tonal control. But if you don't care, if you're lazy, just use the thing that fucking comes in your amp. Because you're going to be the kind of person that uses the same amp on stage as you use in the studio. And so don't fuck about. You know, it just depends on how nerdy you are. And uh, how detailed you are in the sound that you're trying to do. You know, if you're a feeling kind of player and you're just trying to just trying to make a, a, like animal expression, then you don't need a whole lot of pedals. Um, especially something as uh, uh, weird and arcane as compression. You know, to that would be the case for a live performer that didn't give a shit, a lazy person that, and I don't mean lazy in a bad way, but yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't need to fuck around. You're just there to bang your fucking guitar and and just be an animal on stage, and then that's the thing that people are drawn to about the kind of music you make. If, on the other hand, you're an audiophile or you really give a shit about. Uh, soundscaping and and composing and like you're in you're into the guts of how music is made if you're one of those kind of people then yes you want to have a compressor or a multitude of compressors within your effects chain outside of the amp so that was a very long-winded answer i hope that helped you out a little bit we do have a third question from evan uh question three uh, has uh, anyone ever said, thank you, Jamie, for being you? If not, let me say, thank you for being you. Well, God damn it, thank you so much. It turns out that, yeah, a few times, and it's really weird to me when people say that. It has happened a few times. Uh, you know, I've been a uh, very low-level uh, public figure within a very niche market 
for about oh, 11 years now. And in all that time, as I've uh, progressed as a person and as and have progressed as a professional, it has come up a few times in my life where people will send me a message or send me an email that says that exact thing. Thank you for being you. And that always I'm kind of nonplussed by that. I I don't know if I really understand what that means. I mean, I guess I mean, I'm a fan of certain people. And I guess, like, if I – let's just arbitrarily pick one. Uh, let's say Tom Waits. I'm a huge fan of Tom Waits. Huge influence on my life. Somebody I admire and respect. Um, a hero, as it were. And I, I think that he's the kind of person where I would say, hey, yeah, thank you for being you. But I don't know. I just <laughs> – it's really weird. I'm, I'm kind of, I feel myself creeping into asshole territory here with the next thing that naturally occurs to me to say. But I don't think that I would ever bother Tom Waits with a, um, with a, an email or a message like that. I never have, you know, which is not to say, and this is the asshole part, which is not to say that you, sh- that you're wrong for sending me messages like that. I, I think I get it. I think I get it, but you, here's here's a word of advice. Here's a word of advice. Um, never meet your heroes, <laughs> and here's why. Here's why. Because all the things that you admire about me that you're saying, thank you for being you, Jamie, all the things that you're basing that off of is only the stuff I've been willing to show you. E- I'm showing you, I've released to the world the things that I think are the best representation of the best parts of me. And that accounts for a very tiny sliver of who I am. And so if you're basing that um, compliment on only what you've seen, but you've never met me in person, I'd say hold off. (laughs) Hold off. Because you're not seeing the other like, 95% of my life where I'm a douchebag, failure, drunk, screaming at people, losing my temper, being an asshole, making mistakes, spending money the wrong way, making bad choices, being lazy. You've never seen any of that. Um, But if the sharp-eyed listeners, the sharp-eyed viewers may catch it in the fact that my um, output, my creative output, the things that I do decide to show to the world have never made me a star. You know why? Because all the best stuff that I've ever shown about myself suffers from how shitty I am as a person in real life. (laughs) So keep those, I appreciate the compliments, but keep them to yourself and realize that I'm no more or less of a fucking dumbass jackass than you are in your life. I'm simply uh, ambitious about my stupidity, and I will put stuff out there that maybe doesn't even need to be seen, (laughs) you know? And you're actually a better person for being private and not showing, not being ambitious. You know, like, I got a fucking big mouth, and... And, and I, and I got a a mindset where like, Hey, I'm fucking awesome. I got, I make, I can make awesome things and put them into the world. And, and, and I like it and other people like it. The proof is in the pudding. That's not actually the case. (laughs) I don't do too well. I can just keep a roof over my head and that should tell you everything you need to know. So don't thank me for being me. Um, Thank you for being you. Thank you for being not me. <laughs> that's where that's where the money is. <laughs> but graciously, hopefully graciously, I thank you all the same. So thanks for the compliment. That was the end of Evan's questions. Uh, let's move on to our next email. Let's see. Pull it up here. And let's see. We got another one. Okay, this one is from, oh, we have several here. Uh, This is from uh, Cool Breeze. Cool Breeze 063 says, Hey, Jamie. Hey, Cool Breeze. Uh, They say their actual name. I'm I'm trying really hard to not say people's names. Um, I have a kind of a, a 
uh, laissez-faire kind of, I know I, I don't speak French, but I have a, a kind of a weird way of approaching whether or not I want to say people's names or not. Sometimes it matters, sometimes it doesn't, but in the um, spirit of keep, keeping people's anonymity safe, I won't say your real name, uh, but Cool Breeze says, uh, hey Jamie, such and such here. Um, number one, Happy belated birthday. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that was July 3rd, and I appreciate that. Uh, number two says, uh, just watch the Approxapalooza. Uh, damn good show. Love the musical selections. Uh, do you ever post a calendar of where you and Orion are going to be playing? Well, yes, there will absolutely be a, a calendar, and there will absolutely be a bunch of... Um, uh, spam about when we play shows, but right now we're at the tail end of finishing an album, uh, and once the album's finished and pressed, and we have it, you know, the physical copies and the uh, electronic copies, it's on iTunes and everything. Uh, once we have all that under our belt, then we will go out and play. So it's going to be a few more months, uh, but we don't want to go out and play without something to back it up. Um, Orion and I have been in bands for uh, countless years. We've been in innumerable bands. We don't need to um, play for the sake of playing. Uh, we're very much in the mindset right now that if we're going to play live shows at all, it's going to be because we are uh, trying to push uh, a creative effort forward, by and large, an album, as it were. Um and so that's that's where we stand right now. We are too busy, and we have too much going on to just play shows willy-nilly. All that was taken care of in our early 20s, just getting out there and being raw. Uh, now we go out uh, with a show that has purpose. Um, so just wait a few months, and you're going to start seeing dates. We will generally be playing in North Texas, uh, the DFW area. Uh, we'll make our way around the state uh, as we are wanted, as we make a name for ourselves. Um, but we're nowhere near being a national band. We may play a thing on the East Coast or a thing on the West Coast just because we know a guy that knows a guy. Uh, but, you know, hey, we'll see how the future plays out. Um, so just keep just keep paying attention to the, the Twitter feed and, the, you know, all the links and stuff that you see associated with my name. And, uh, yeah, you'll hear about the dates. Um, number three, uh, Cool Breeze says, uh, liked your sister's songs as well. Uh, who are her musical influences, if you know? Uh, and does she ever gig anywhere? My sister's a weird anomaly. I'm so glad that you liked her music. She's one of my favorite musicians. And I'm not saying that out of nepotism. I'm saying that out of jealousy. My sister has more talent in her goddamn fucking eyelash than I do in my entire goddamn body. And it really makes me mad. <laughs> it really makes me mad. Um, I started playing music a long, long, long time ago, and I always had a, a, a guitar around the house. I was always playing music, uh, being in bands and stuff when I was a teenager. She's seven years my junior, and she would see me being, like, just a musician's musician um, all throughout my teens. And she uh, got it in her head, you know, a uh, uh, sibling, influences a sibling, to pick up guitar and start trying her hand at writing songs and being in bands and stuff. And she just completely, she comes from a place of such honesty and sincerity, and she doesn't overthink anything. And she's so pure in her intentions. It just and and so adept at she her color palette in her chord progressions in in the way she approaches her rhythms and her influences just m makes me want to throw my guitar down. Um, she's a goddamn prodigy. And here's the rub: she doesn't do anything with it. My entire family uh, looks at my sister and goes. Do something with this. She never does. She's content to just play in the bedroom with her guitar, sing songs with her boyfriend, maybe bust out the guitar during like a family event, Thanksgiving or something. 
And that's as much as she does. She's tinkered around with bands, uh, but never made anything of it. And is just much happier just playing for the love of playing. And I can't think of anything more pure and uh, more admirable than what my sister does. The fact that she played on the Aproxapalooza at all is... Uh, it's like a God sent to me, man. I don't even believe in God. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really glad that you liked her songs. As far as her influences go, um, you can imagine, yeah, her, her, she's so varied and wide in her musical palette and her appreciation of music. It's hard to pinpoint any one thing that she likes that I would classify as an influence. Um, save to say that she likes the best of anything that music has to offer across all genres. She's very much like me. This is very much a family kind of mindset. We all have the same kind of brains. Is We don't necessarily care what the thing is so long as it's the, the best version of it, so long as it's quality, so long as it's good. Um, so there's probably not a band... Or, or a type of music that you can name that she's not into, just know that she likes the best version of it. I think that's the best way I can describe my sister's uh, influences. I know that's kind of vague, but I hope that helps. <clears throat> so, question four from Cool Breeze says, uh, you guys should continue to periodically do music shows on the podcast. Maybe not a full Palooza, but a condensed mini version. Two or three songs at a pop. Mixed in with all the rest of the platforms. You know, I don't think that's a horrible idea. Um, actually, uh, Orion and I have gone back and forth with this very idea. Uh, I, right now, the shows that we have that fall under the approximate uh, podcast umbrella are the main shows that happen at the beginning of the week, the official approximate podcast. We have shows at the end of the week like this, the Ask a Tranny. Uh, we have Orion's uh, personal show called the 900, 900 seconds, 15 minutes worth of just kind of personal journal entry content. And then we do the little Nintendo show uh, uh, towards the middle of the week, uh, the bad NES, where we just play old NES games and, uh, you know, uh, do a little video game show for old people. <laughs> um, and when we first started the Approximate podcast... We were, we knew we didn't want to just do one a week. Uh, we wanted to make it as entertaining as possible throughout the week, but it's hard coming up with show ideas, especially when everything has been done. But seeing how our first love and the thing that we're most adept at is being musicians, it kind of made sense that we would put a show together where we just played songs. We did like 30 minutes of songs, maybe a three or four song set. Uh, it actually have to be four or five songs to fill in 30 minutes. We do, you know, three-minute palatable songs. So it would take a few, um, and we could do it, and it's something that we're tink tinkering with in the new year, but I I see it more off, I see it more as a one-off thing, um, something that happens every couple of months rather than a weekly show, uh, because we're so busy with the music that we make as a band it's hard to cut out an extra slice of time to dedicate to doing extra songs and extra kind of thought out set list for a one off show. I don't know. It's 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 something that we're just gonna have to feel our way through. I don't know my guts right now tells me that it's not gonna be a weekly endeavor, but I definitely see it as being something that happens as a treat every couple of months. Um, so I hope that answers your question there. Of, of course, all these things uh, might change in the future, but that's where we stand right now. Um, and then he says, Cool Breeze says, keep up the good work. Looking forward to year two. Well, so are we, and I hope this is a, uh, a fitting effort to the start of the second year of the uh, approximate podcast thank you so much for listening thank you everyone in the room for listening uh and uh, everybody who's listening to this after the fact thank you so much for listening uh you've given us reason to keep doing this so thank you okay now we got one more email here 
this is from um there's no there's no uh hidden name it just says what i believe to be a real name uh michael and a last name so i'll just say michael uh michael writes in and says um uh wants to know best they might be giants song not on the album flood and best they might be giants album not flood Okay, so Michael's obviously a, a listener or a fan of mine, uh, knowing to ask a They Might Be Giants question, seeing as how They Might Be Giants is my favorite band. Um, and the reason why he is uh, he's saying uh, favorite song not on Flood and favorite album not Flood, the reason why he's qualifying his question is because Flood is basically seen as the most famous album that they have it's it's the one with uh some of their hugest hits the the album and the songs on the album that if anybody knows of they might be giants at all it's because of songs from that album or that album uh so and and this is a band that has uh, been has been with us publicly from 1986 till this very day. Um, so, and, and they're very, very prolific. So they have a lot of albums to choose from. And so he just wants to take away my ability to say, well, Flood and uh, Istanbul, not Constantinople or Particle Man. And I get that. I'm a huge fan of the Might Be Giants. And I, first of all, Michael, I'd never give those answers to begin with. That I'm a huge fan. I would never say Flood or, you know, the two big hits that came off that album or Birdhouse in Your Soul. Um, gorgeous songs as they are. No, uh, I'd say pound for pound. Uh, I would go with uh, 1988's uh, Lincoln. Pound for pound, uh, from one song to the next, the entire album... Um, is completely amazing, solid, and true to their most, um, I don't know, their most vibrant ideas as young people, uh, where, where, where your ideas are really just bubbling over and your mind is working overtime. At the age of, oh, about 25 to 28, that's when Lincoln came out. They were that age at that time, and they were just putting out some of their, the kind of sound that very much defines a band like They Might Be Giants. They really defined their sound with Lincoln. And uh, selected tracks that I would uh, suggest people listen to are an opening track, a track called Anna Ng, um, a, uh, let's see, um, Oh, Purple Toupee, go and listen to that one. Uh, go and listen to, oh, geez. Uh, God, there's so many. They Might Be Giants is one of those kind of bands where they write two and a half to three and a half minute songs, and every album has like 22 tracks on it. Again, they're very uh, uh, prolific. Um, but yeah, go look up uh, Lincoln from uh, 1988. Uh, you know, go on the Spotify or the iTunes or, you know, you still want to go to the old record store. I'm sure there's uh, reissues. Go find that. Whatever kind of person, however way you listen to music, just go find that fucking album and do it and put it on and uh, enjoy what music is supposed to be. <laughs> That's always kind of how I thought of They Might Be Giants. A, a distilled version of contemporary pop music uh, uh, the perfect the perfect synthesis of brains, rhythm, melody, and just enough heart for the thinking person. It's thinking person's rock, and I know that may sound pretentious and douchey, but it really is. If if you know, if you're no, you're you're maybe in the uh, I don't know 120 IQ range. Uh, maybe they might be giants. Uh, the kind of band for you. <laughs> If you're, you know, if you're in the uh, 80 to 100 range, you know, an average Joe, you know, maybe not so much they might be giants. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, that would be my pick. And, uh, again, that's, that's a really tough one. You know, I'm sure my, my uh, mood will fluctuate out of the 20-some-odd albums that they released over the years. Um, 
But if, you know, you're putting my ass to the fire, I say Lincoln. Uh, okay, so it looks like that's the end of our emails. And we're coming up on, hey, we're doing pretty good. We're, uh, we started with 10 minutes of bullshit, and we're up to 41 minutes. So we're at the 30-minute mark. Let me see. I believe I have an actual voicemail from the burner line, which is 817-673-3704. You can uh, text us a message, uh, drop us a line, leave a voicemail, and we'll answer you on shows like this, Ask a Tranny or wherever, whatever show we find most appropriate. Uh, to answer your questions. And here, I'm going to see if I can pull this off. Give me just a second. Do, do, do. Pull up the old voicemail here. Going to enter my password. And let's see. One, to listen to your messages, press 1. To... First, save voice message. Hey, Jamie, this is Illyria Bean, the one that you keep calling Elliot when you're doing uh, ASCA training, and I just wanted to say I hope your surgery went well and that you're doing well. I can't wait to hear more coming from you, and I just hope that all is well. I hope that you do a podcast on your experience with your surgery, and yeah, that's all. Thanks for putting on a great podcast to you and Orion both. Great job. End of message. To a rate. Thank you so much, Elliot, for actually leaving a voicemail. We really appreciate that. And I'm going to keep fucking up everybody's name because I think that's a funny bit. That's funny to me and it's how I keep myself interested. So if I keep fucking up your name, uh, wear it as a badge of honor. Elliot, Evelyn, Eva, I don't know. What? Huh? <laughs> But no, thank you very much. Now, I haven't gotten any official questions about the surgery I just recently uh, recently went through. <laughs> the surgery I just had. Um, that's because I think uh, we're going to dedicate an entire episode, or at least part of, a, of an episode, to the surgery. Because there's a lot going on with the kind of surgery that I had, where I don't just want to have it just like be a wasted bit and a long forgotten live questions and answers show. Um, I, I think there's a lot of information that people that are interested in the kind of surgery I had would really like care about, want to know. And I want to be able to be halfway sober um, and give as much pertinent information as I can uh, in in a more kind of controlled, non-live environment. So there will be a show about that. Uh, but I don't know. It'll come soon. It'll come soon. I'm still in the midst of healing from the particular surgery I had. Uh, so I want to be able to have all the facts at hand, uh, before I go on and on at length. Uh, because it's one of those kind of things where the kind of surgery I had is very important to the people that want that kind of surgery. And I don't want to fuck it up. I want to dedicate some real time to it and do it right. Um, and give the very best information that I can. Um, so it will be a, a, a detailed show, or at least a detailed segment of an of a larger show. Um, you know, even though there's a lot to talk about, I don't know that I could fill up an hour talking about it. So it may be a segment of a larger show. But either way, it's going to be constructed, and uh, and, and I don't want to just start blurting out stuff about this particular surgery. Um, on, on just, you know, a live weekend show. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, we will get to those answers that you want. Um, and if you have questions, please, by all means, if you guys have questions about the surgery, please send them in. That will help me round out the show when we start to talk about that thing. Um, otherwise, uh, I'm going to read a few questions from the room uh, because, I mean, as I always say, I don't ever mean to seem like I'm ignoring the chat room. It's just I got to get all the front-loaded stuff out of the way before I start answering uh, questions. Because I'm only one person, and I only got two eyes. And uh, most of the time, they're blurry. Because most of the time, I'm drinking. Hey, everybody, cheers. So, uh, let me start from the top here and see if there's anything worth answering. 
or anything worth remarking upon. Okay, let's see here. Um, <clears throat> some of these. This is always going to be the case when uh, when you're reading from the chat room. People will remark on stuff that you just like pulled out of your ass and you've immediately forgotten about, so you can't get the reference. Uh, so, like as an example, uh, our good buddy uh, Brett Wendell here says, "Not written by a ghost. You're quite clever." I already forgot what you're referencing there, <laughs> so I can't answer that. Um, again, another one by Brett Wendell. Brett, uh, Brett Wendell. I'm sorry. I'm so bad with the words. Brett Wendell. <laughs> Yeah, when in doubt, add an H to the word. That'll clear you right up. I'm saying, I'm saying, Brett Herendel, Brett w- Wendel, Br- Brett Wendel. No, no, no. Add an H. Brett Wendel. <laughs> Comes out very easy. Uh, what's your favorite instrument to play, uh, to use, and to compose? Oh, okay. Well, that's a good question. Uh, my favorite instrument to play is bass, because I've been playing bass all my It's the instrument I started on, and so... Um, I, it just feels the most natural. I can really express myself on a bass guitar. Um, and the, the instrument that I write on is always an acoustic guitar. Um, very much like uh, Billy Joel did, or maybe still does to this day. Uh, he's, he, he made it a point to let people know that he wrote his songs on an acoustic and then transposed those songs to the piano and then made them fancy on the piano. But getting the basic building blocks down for songwriting, acoustic guitar every time. Um, The chords just make sense to me. The fingering positions just make sense to me. Just Just to get the blocks of composition out of the way. Uh, And then... Well, if it's an acoustic, if it's meant to be an acoustic song, if acoustic guitar seems to be the instrument that lends itself best to the song, well, then I will take the time to fancy up the acoustic. But by and large, if I'm writing a song that's meant to be on piano or meant to be played by another kind of uh, a, another rhythm instrument that that is not the acoustic, I will write on the acoustic and then transpose and then doll it up on the other instrument once I get the main part of the composition out of the way through the chord progressions I use on the acoustic. So I hope that answers your question there. Uh, What do you do when your band members suck but don't want to kick them out? No, you don't have time for that. Yeah, from an... It takes your 20s to learn how to avoid toxic people. And if your first inclination about anybody in your band is that they suck... um, you have to man up. I don't care what gender you fucking are. You have to man up and tell them to leave. Because the worst thing that happens is that your band is now devoid of suck. That's the worst thing that happens. And then you fill in the gaps with somebody who doesn't suck. And you may have to repeat that process several times. But if you're really interested in pursuing your band, you will have enough respect for your band and your other good bandmates to step up and go, sorry, guy, you got to leave. Because if you don't, you're not only are you fucking up your own band, but you're denying the sucky person an opportunity to learn from their mistakes. They need you to tell them they suck and to be disheartened and to be kicked out of a band so that they can learn to suck less. And that's never going to happen unless you man up and kick them the fuck out. So, do both of y'all a favor and man up and kick them the fuck out. That simple. That simple. Hope that ties it up for you. And on that musician's question, we're going to play this motherfucker out. You were listening to Ask Your Tranny. That's the thing that you're watching and listening to. Th- those are chords that don't make sense. Ask a tranny. There you go. Good night, folks. <laughs>